my name's Abby. Um, welcome to my first ever video. This is something that I've not really spoken about openly. Only a few of my friends and family know that in July 2017, I was diagnosed with a blood cancer called Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, this September is Blood Cancer Awareness Month, so I wanted to raise awareness by talking about the symptoms that I had experienced up until I was diagnosed with my disease. So in November 2016, I noticed that I started to get really heavy nosebleeds and these nosebleeds would happen three to four times a week and sometimes twice in a day. And I remember they were coming down like heavy and fast, just like randomly. And I would be like this and I would be running my nose under cold water. I didn't really time the nosebleeds, but I felt like they lasted longer than two minutes. Just a really long time for me to be having a nosebleed and eventually it would stop. And I just put this down to congestion. I assumed that because it's cold outside and whenever I went from somewhere um, cold to somewhere warm with like heat, I just assumed that um, my nose would just, uh, I don't even know the signs. I just assumed that it was, it would just burst or something like that. And I noticed as well that I would have um, skin rashes on the back of my hands and also on my knees and elbows and this skin rash would last right up until my diagnosis and with this skin rash I noticed that it would appear a week and a half before I started my period and a week um, after I finished it would disappear so the rash would come and go I'm just going to post a picture now so you know what it looks like So the rash would come and go and I just assumed that I was under stress and that's what caused it. But in um, around about, yeah, probably December or maybe even January 2017, I started to experience itching and my thighs would really itch. Like they would just itch randomly. So I assumed with the rash and the itchy legs that perhaps I'm allergic to something. So I went to see my doctor and she had a look at my rash and she told me that it's probably an eczema. So I went for an allergy test and it turns out that I, was allerg I wasn't allergic to anything. I also had a blood test and there was nothing that showed that I had any allergies. So I just thought, okay, perhaps it could just be stress. And then in February, I started to experience shortness of breath, just doing everyday tasks, really, like walking up the stairs and um, sometimes even doing nothing. I just felt like I was just unable to breathe or breathe properly. So February the 14th, Valentine's Day, I decided to join the gym because I wanted to improve my fitness. And from there, I noticed that my fitness didn't really improve, which is weird for me because I'm quite a sportive person. So I couldn't quite figure out why all of a sudden I'm having shortness of breath and that when I'm at the gym, my fitness levels just aren't improving. And then in towards the end of March, it was a friend's birthday, so we decided to go to Florence, Italy. And towards the end of the trip, I developed a cold and I had almost lost my voice. But I thought, you know, it's cold, I'm coughing, so I wasn't too concerned. And then in April, I went home for a week because I live in Paris, so I went back home to London and I noticed for seven days straight, which was weird, I should have got medical attention, but I didn't. Every time I laid down, I would instantly get back up because I would have to start coughing. And I would run to the bathroom to like spit, like I had phlegm on my chest. And then I'd lay back down and I would get back up, coughing. And 
this was really unusual i couldn't quite figure out what was going on but eventually i went to sleep and when i went back home to paris the coffin fits had stopped so i was able to lay down normally and i decided that i'm still getting breathless and i'm still feeling really tired now like couldn't explain why all of a sudden i would just randomly feel tired it felt like i just couldn't get enough sleep i was just all i wanted to do was sleep so i just thought okay i'm gonna still persist at the gym so i continued to exercise and i decided that i was going to increase my weight lifting not that i was lifting heavily i just decided to go up a weight and um that same week so before i went up a weight i remember that must have been on a monday that week i remember that I had a fever and this fever just lasted for one night I was just sweating and then after the next day I felt completely fine well my version of fine because at this point I had adapted to the shortness of breath feeling tired and also the rash the skin rashes and the itchy skin I just adapted to it so I decided to increase my weight and that night um, I was taken off my eye makeup and I looked in the mirror and I remember looking at myself thinking something's not quite right here and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. So I'm really staring at my face, I'm looking into my eyes, I'm looking at my nose, my mouth, just my whole face, trying to figure out what's going on, like why I look odd all of a sudden. So I looked down at my neck and I noticed, hopefully you can see that um, here my collarbone had disappeared and I wasn't sure what was going on I thought perhaps I'd pulled a muscle at the gym so I went to bed and I thought you know by the time I hopefully when I wake up the next morning I'm back to normal again and before I went to bed I actually went on google as you do and I started googling like um bone diseases because I thought I just had some random bone disease or something like that anyway the next day I woke up anxious and I looked in the mirror and all of this was completely gone. So this part had now disappeared and I randomly did this and I saw like a little um, rubbery ball, like if you touched it, it would move and then come back. So I assumed that this part had rotated and is now there. So I thought I had somehow randomly um, broken a bone. But then I was like, no, if you've broken a bone, you're going to know about it. So I decided to go to A&E. Luckily, it's just around the corner from where I live. So I went and saw a doctor. And she started to feel my neck and feel on my under my armpits and also my groin area and she put a stethoscope on my back and asked me to cough so i did that <clears throat> and she asked me are you experienced have you been coughing recently and i thought about it and i said yes actually and she said well how long have you had your cough for and I realised I hadn't stopped coughing since March, since the end of March, which is quite a long time to have a cough. And she asked me, have you been experiencing night sweats? And I said, I've actually had um, one night I had a fever, but that was just for one night. The night sweats hadn't happened for me yet. So she said, OK, I had a um, x-ray and... I'm not sure what they said because it was in French, but she said um, they saw like white dots on my x-ray and they thought I had tuberculosis, but it seems that I don't. But I should still go back um, the following Monday and um, see this, that there was this department called um, Tropical Melody. I think it's like um, in tropical infections or something like that. So I saw a doctor there 
and he asked me general questions like how am I feeling have I lost any weight to which I said yes but I was going to the gym so I was I would expect to have lost weight I wasn't too concerned about that but I explained to him you know I was feeling really tired all of a sudden and just shortness of breath and he could see my collarbone was swollen and that I had this lump here so I had a blood test and the following week i went back to see him and my results were negative and i remember asking him do you think this is cancer and the reason why i asked that question was because believe it or not a year before my cousin was actually diagnosed with hodgkin's lymphoma but i didn't know what type of cancer she had I just remember my mum saying that they had found a lump in her neck so because I had a lump on my collarbone I thought I would ask and he said to me no that it's not cancer but if he thought it was or if I was concerned they can put a camera down my throat and find out what's going on but for, for now he would rather just like watch and wait so I had a blood test and then I went and then the third time I saw him the following week, he said to me, it seemed like to him my lump had gotten bigger. Like he wasn't happy because basically there was no improvement. So he asked if I could stay. And I said I couldn't stay in the, I was there in the morning. I wasn't able to stay in the afternoon. So I actually didn't know that he wanted me to um, to book me in to actually stay in the hospital. So the next day I went back because we agreed that I would come back the following day. So the next day I went back and I um, spoke to a nurse and she said to me, um, do you have your bag? And I said, well, why would I? And she said, well, because we need you to stay. And my doctor was away because it's May and I don't know if you know about France but in May there's lots of holidays so my doctor was away and this nurse didn't actually know why they needed me to stay I don't think she had read my notes yet so I phoned my friend I was panicking I was like you know I'm being hospitalized they won't tell me why and I don't know what to do so she said, no, they have to tell you. They can't just keep you without um, explaining why. So I went back to see the nurse and I said, you know, I would like to know why you guys want to keep me here. <clears throat> so she went and f I guess found another doctor, like someone that could read my notes. And I got a phone call from the doctor and he said to me, they would like me to stay because they suspect that I have tuberculosis and they wanted to run more in-depth tests so with that i only lived around the corner so i went home luckily went home got my bag and then ch checked myself into the hospital and they started to run tests i had x-rays um like those um spit tests that i had to do twice and um they took like some fluid from the mass that i had because Whilst I was in hospital, my rash appeared again and I developed like a lump in my throat. So they took fluid from that. I had to do these tests twice and it's May. So I was there for 10 days. So I guess the results lab, I guess they were, I don't know, they were short of stuff. It took a while for the results to come back and nothing was screaming tuberculosis. I even had um, a biopsy on one of the spots. I didn't even know it was possible. Um, a guy came into my um, room and he basically picked a spot. He took it away and that came back, interestingly enough, as um, an eczema. So um, all my results are negative now. Nothing screaming tuberculosis so they had to let me go so i checked out hospital but on that day my last day i had another blood test where i literally tested for everything i counted 17 test tubes i didn't even know it was possible to take that much blood from somebody but that's how much they took from me 
and I was waiting for my results. These times it's now June, so it's hot. And whilst I'm at home, I notice that I'm starting to have night sweats, like I'm waking up just soaking wet. But again, it's the summertime, so I just thought, you know, it's hot in my room, it's normal. And I remember walking one day and I was just really hot all of a sudden. And I remember saying to my friends, man, this has to be the hottest summer that I've experienced here. And I remember being on the metro and I was just like, I would just break out in sweat. Like I would just start sweating and I'm not someone that usually sweats. So when I was looking at other girls on the metro, they were wearing makeup, they were wearing weave, and they were fine. So I realised that this is me, like, I'm randomly hot all of a sudden, I'm starting to sweat, I'm having rashes, I'm feeling tired, shortness of breath, I thought I was menopausing. So I text my mom and I was like, did you experience early menopause? And she said, no. So I went back to the hospital to um, get my blood results. They actually hadn't had, they hadn't received my results yet. And this is like the second week of June. So I spoke to a doctor who, I mean, I had seen so many doctors because no one knew what was going on whilst I was hospitalized. So many different doctors would come and go trying to figure out what I had. So there was this one doctor, she was persistent, like that I had tuberculosis. And she said to me, we're still waiting on your results, but I think you still have tuberculosis and I think you should start taking medication for it now. And I said to her, well, how long is this medication for? How long will I have to take it for? And she said, I think it was from, six to nine months which is a long time so I said to her you know I don't feel comfortable taking medication for something that we don't know that I've got so she said fair enough I said you know I would like to know what I've got before I start taking any medication what can we do so she looked at my um my collarbone and she said okay you can see um an ORL which is one of those um in French they say ORL but it's like a throat mouth nose doctor so I went to see this lady and she put um, a camera down my throat and now this is the interesting part because I could see on the screen when I looked that um, my throat was completely pink and so were my lungs so she wasn't concerned and I wasn't concerned because nothing looked like cancer not that I would know what cancer looked like I was just like I could see that my um, inside looked pink so I just thought you know that's that's fine so she looked at my collarbone and she saw my lymph node I didn't even know what lymph nodes were so she said to me they can take it out so the next day I had a biopsy and I was waiting for my results and whilst I'm waiting I'm still you know feeling breathless still going to the gym and I remember doing an exercise class and I almost collapsed. It was one of those intense um, cardio classes where you jump down, jump back up and you start running and then you squat back down and you do push-ups. And during um, the running round, I almost passed out, which is completely out of character for me because I've always, I've, you know, I've always been a fit person, so I just couldn't figure out, and I was so angry at myself, thinking, you know, what is wrong with you, like, this isn't you, you're a fit person, and because I'm so pushy with myself, I decided to rest, like, sit the running bit out, and then I just went back into the class and continued, which was crazy, I can't believe I did that, but I did, because I was just determined to finish, that's just how I am. So it's coming up now to the end of, yeah, it's coming up now to the end of June. I haven't heard anything from the hospital about my biopsy. So I went back to um, make an appointment. 
and I saw a doctor and she said to me um, she hadn't yet had my results printed out so she went to go get my results and when she came back she was really worried and she seemed really concerned and she said to me you have to go back to hospital but not this hospital and I was like what's going on and she said to me in French they found something it's to do with my blood and it's quite serious and I was like okay so she said to me I would need to go back to another hospital to see an oncologist I had no idea what an oncologist was and I said to her okay what do I have because I wasn't sure if she actually said Hodgkin's lymphoma and if she did it just went over my head because it's something I had never heard before and I thought it was just some a French word that I had no knowledge of so I read she's gone to make contact with the with the other hospital and I'm reading my um my results and it's all in French and I'm trying to figure out what's going on what what it says so it says um Hodgkin's lymphoma classic de type sans Epstein Barr virus so for some reason I start to google Epstein Barr virus if I'm pronouncing it right um, and it said without so I'm assuming okay I don't have have whatever this is supposed to be because I just assumed in my mind to have Hodgkin's lymphoma I would have to have the Epstein Barr virus I don't know why I thought that but that's what I thought so when she came back she was really nice she had written down she had written down everything for me to take to the hospital and i asked her you know what is it that i actually have and she didn't want to tell me because she knew i would google it and you know how it is when you google something so she said just wait until because she wasn't actually um specialized in that domain so she said she'd rather me see an oncologist who could explain to me in further detail what it was so she gave me my, she put my results in an envelope and closed it. Well, me being me that night when I went home, I reopened the envelope and I reread the results again. And this time I'm Googling Hodgkin's lymphoma and I don't like what I see. And at this point, I'm kind of still, I guess, in denial, not really knowing what to expect because I'm still adamant that I can't have it because if it is a blood cancer I've had all these tests and they've all come back negative so there's just no way I could have it and plus it's saying sans Epstein-Barr virus without it so I'm like I doubt it well the penny dropped the following day I went to see the oncologist and I think he had assumed that I had already knew what I had from the other hospital so he's talking to me about treatment and he said to me um treatment for you we're, we're looking at radiation or chemotherapy and when he said chemotherapy that's when i asked him is this cancer and he said yes and he asked me did the other hospital not explain that to you and I said to him you know she didn't really feel comfortable because it wasn't her domain and she would rather me talk to you so he told me that it was um, Hodgkin's lymphoma and that I needed to do more tests because he didn't know what stage I was so I had my test and it turned out that I was um, 3B so Hodgkin's lymphoma 3B and I remember saying to him like I don't understand because I don't drink I don't smoke my diet was actually quite bad but that's another video for another time and he said to me it's just one of those things and I had no idea that all those symptoms were basically a sign of my 
disease. That's why it's important to raise awareness and that's why I wanted to um, do this video because perhaps there could be someone out there that's experiencing the same symptoms as I was and if you are and hopefully you're not please go get checked out because even if you are it might not be um, Hodgkin's lymphoma but it's still nice to go get checked out or if you know somebody that's experiencing the same symptoms as me please feel free to um, pass this to share this video with them my next video I'll be talking about um, chemotherapy and how it made me feel so hopefully you've made it to the end thank you so much for listening to my story and I look forward to seeing you in my next video bye